In this video series, using ANSYS AIM, I will prepare the geometry of a high pressure nozzle. Then I will set up a fluid flow simulation, describing the fluid exiting the nozzle. Finally, I will optimize the nozzle's geometry to find a design that maximizes the wall shear on the surface of impact. In this video, I will prepare the geometry and set up the fluid flow simulation. I will start by generating a fluid flow template in AIM. For this case, I will be using a new geometry designed for a compressible flow. AIM creates a simulation process based on the options I selected. With the simulation process generated, I can start preparing the nozzle's geometry for the upcoming fluid flow simulation. To start, I will insert a pre-existing nozzle geometry. This may be done by selecting Insert and then selecting the corresponding geometry file or by dragging and dropping the geometry file into the AIM modeling window. With the nozzle's geometry imported, I can start modifying it in preparation for the simulation. I will start by removing the chamfer on the back of the nozzle by selecting it and pressing delete. Now I can extend the back portion of the nozzle to a length of 65 millimeters using the pull feature. The nozzle must be rotated 225 degrees. To do this, I will select the entire geometry by triple clicking a single component and pulling the geometry in the direction I wish to rotate it. This opens a small box in which I can specify the number of degrees to rotate the geometry. The nozzle's assembly has been prepared. To model the surrounding air, I must enclose the nozzle. This can be done by opening the Prepare tab and selecting Enclosure. AIM modeling automatically generates a suitable enclosure. Since this geometry has a symmetry plane through its lengthwise cross-section, I can speed up my calculation by splitting the geometry about this symmetry plane and solving the flow field on half of the geometry. To do this, I must insert a YZ plane and then select Split Body. To cut the geometry at the inserted plane, I need to select the body and then select the plane. As we can see, AIM modeling has divided the geometry into two congruent sections. I can remove one of the sections by clicking on it. Now I will hide the portion of the nozzle which extends outside of the enclosure. After making a few modifications to the enclosure and the nozzle's inlet, the final geometry is ready for meshing. In AIM, a general mesh resolution may be set using this slider. I will keep the default value and set mesh inflation boundaries in some critical areas. The bottom face of the enclosure and the interior of the nozzle will have inflation boundary layers. To avoid having to select each component of the nozzle, I will select the entire body and then deselect the appropriate faces. The mesh sizing of the front and the bottom faces must be adjusted using face sizing. This option allows me to directly input the size of the elements at these faces. I also want to set the element size at the tip of the nozzle to 0.02 millimeters. The mesh setup is complete. Now I can specify the physics settings for the upcoming fluid flow simulation. The first thing I will do is set the location of the inlet. The inlet will be located here. I'm setting it as a pressure inlet with a gauge total pressure of 60 psi. The temperature of the fluid will be 25 degrees Celsius. Next, I will set the front face as a symmetry boundary. Now, I will set the following four faces as openings. They will have gauge pressures of 0 pascals and temperatures of 25 degrees Celsius. The remaining faces will be set as walls.
For faster convergence, I will enter the solver settings menu and increase the number of parallel processes from 2 to 6. To reach adequate convergence, I will increase the maximum number of iterations to 400. The problem can now be solved. Here's the contour plot produced by the simulation, describing the magnitude of the wall shear at the bottom face. This concludes part 1 of this video series. In part 2, I'll optimize the nozzle's geometry to maximize its wall shear.